Okay guys, so I thought I'd do a little quick video for you just to help you with questions 4, 5 and 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through question 4 and hopefully it will help you to then answer question 5 and 6 by yourself. Okay, so we have the question here, right? It's question 4, exercise 9e. And it says given this function, find the derivative. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the gradient function for this equation. Okay, now we have got the equation in a form that we are not comfortable with, so we're going to change this. All right, we're going to change this into something that we can work with. And now we can find the derivative. Okay, so we're going to use the chain rule to find the derivative of this function. Okay, so dy by dx. Okay, so using the chain rule, we're going to bring that power down to the front. And we're going to reduce the power by 1. Okay, that's the outside. Now we need to differentiate the inside. So the differentiate the inside. The inside is just that 2x over there, right? We have it differentiated and we're just going to tidy everything up, all right? These, um, this minus 1, so we have here a minus 1, a 2, and a 2x. Those guys are just going to become minus 4x, okay? And that bracket with the minus 2 is just going to drop down to the bottom. We're going to have x squared plus 5 to the power of 2. Okay, so there we have found the derivative of our function. Okay. Right, now obviously we've dealt with these kinds of problems before where they said, right, well here is an equation, right? Find the derivative and based on what you get, find the primitive. Okay, find the um, primitive function from based on what we've just been given. So we need to compare the two and make a ratio and see how much of the original function we're going to use. Okay, so why don't we quickly pop this guy up to the top? There he is over there. And let's compare the two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the old function to the new function. Okay, so let's have a look. If we had to take the integral of this primitive function, what would we actually get? Right. So it's best to just write them next to each other so you can compare them. All right. We have 2x over x squared plus 5. And over here we have minus 4x over x squared plus 5. And these are both squared. Okay, so let's compare the two, right? This guy here on, on the left, he is exactly one half, not just one half, minus one half of the original function. Okay, so that means that our original equation gives us half of what we're looking for. Here is our original equation. Okay. This guy gave us a derivative of minus 4x squared, right? But we're not looking for minus 4x squared. We're only looking for 2x squared. And that is exactly minus 1 half of, of that. So in other words, if we're looking for the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x over x squared plus 5 squared. The first thing we need to do is anti-differentiate it to find the primitive, right? And remember, when we have a function that's not a linear function on the inside, we needed something to help us find the primitive function. And that's exactly what you've done in the first part of the question, okay? So we're basically going to use our answer from the first part to help us anti-differentiate. Okay, so we've just established that that is a half of my original function. Okay, oh, sorry, not just a half, negative a half. And there was my original function. Okay, 2 over 
4x plus 5. So this is 2 over x squared plus 5. Okay. Obviously, when we did this the first time, we had to add the, the c in there. But because we are actually going to establish this, we're going to evaluate this between 0 and 2, we've learned that the Charlie basically is going to disappear. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy up a little bit on the inside here. This 2 can cross cancel and I'm just going to be left with minus 1 at the top. Right, so from there we can now plug in the start and end values and we can work out what this is going to be. So remember we're going to start with the end. I know that sounds silly. We're going to start with the end. So we're going to plug in 2 everywhere we have an x. So we're going to have minus 1 all over 2 squared plus 5. That's my end. And I'm going to take away from the start. So that's minus 1 over 0 squared plus 5. This is my start. Okay, So that's how you, you've been doing that your whole life. right? If you want to find out the difference between 5 and 2, you take 5 minus 2 and you get 3. All right, over here I'm going to get minus 1 over, that's 4 squared, or 2 squared is 4, so we're going to have minus 1 over 9. Take away minus 1 over 5. And if we quickly plug that into the calculator, we're going to get Let's just have a look here. This is going to give us 4 over 45. Okay, so I'll quickly verify that in the textbook. 4 over 45. Okay, so I hope that will help you with questions 5 and 6. Okay, so remembering that in order to anti differentiate, right, if we have a function that required the chain rule, right? We can't just anti-differentiate, right? We would need to know what the original function was first, okay? So this is what we did in part A. We took some other function that was similar and we, and we found the derivative. And using our result, we were basically able to compare the two, right? We compared what we got as a result to what we want in the next part of, and we just like we did in 9.4 we as Dominic said we looked at the ratio between the two okay we found that what we got from our our answer it was exactly minus a half of what we want okay which means that the function that it came from must also be um, minus a half of that function okay so hopefully that will help you guys with the next questions